The time between 400 AD to 1500 AD was considered the Middle Ages. The most important thing during that time was the church. The word church, name derived from Greek and Roman terms meaning universal, and it has also been called the Latin Rite Church because its main language was Latin. The church formed an alternate form of loyalty for its people. It is also the only international organization that was most likely the most important guiding factor in a person's life, as well as being the largest landowner in all of Europe. It became the strongest institution due to the lack of a single state or government rule. By 1420, the church owned a quarter of the land in Britain alone. At this time, there were over 20,000 separate communities named monasteries in England. When asked who were or are the most important people in the Middle Ages, a common answer might be, oh, it's the kings and queens, but it's actually the Pope. He was in charge of everyone, even the kings and queens. The Pope could clear people with oaths of obedience, which was a powerful weapon in a deeply religious age. His most important officers were the archbishops, then the bishops, the priests, and everyone else were the lay people responsible for abbots and abbesses. One in 50 lay people were priests, unlike today, where one in 1,000 are priests. The priests were not well educated, bishops of the church also had enough power and wealth to negotiate with barbarian leaders. A turning point in the church started with the Great Western Schism. This was an unintentional separation of power when the leaders of the church broke in three, creating a livid atmosphere that divided all of Europe. It can be explained as three rivals all claiming to be God's representative in the battle for the hearts and souls of Europe's faith. The Catholic Church acted in some ways as our government works today. The Church could implement taxes. Ordinary people called, paid pack, taxes called tith. They paid a tenth of their income to the Church every year. These, their taxes could be for kind taxes, like sheep or corn, or just coins and mint. Kind taxes were stored in the tith bond. In the 14th century, the Church made a move to increase such taxes. They were also incredibly powerful as they could sell indulgences. These are practices where citizens could be forgiven of their sins for price, most likely money. This corrupt system was a leading issue in the Protestant Revolution. Once you step into one of these churches, there are pictures of marriage, God, and the apostles. Once you died, you would live with God and his saints in heaven only if you were baptized in the name of Christ and did what the church said was right. However, if you didn't, you would join the devils in hell and those of other faith, according to the church. Many people were sure they would go to heaven since they devoted most of their entire life to God. Monks and nuns fed the poor, cared for the sick, and gave travelers for a bed, a bed for the night. They promised that they can never marry, own nothing, and will always obey their Abba. Monks usually spend their lives in silence and would usually be in cloisters, studying and copying down the Gospels, as well as other holy books. In the late Middle Ages, boys grammar schools were founded, though the teachers were very strict. The students were beaten up whenever they didn't learn well. As such, some say their education was beaten into them. The church became a pivotal part of every person's life. The Black Plague caused people to begin to question the church's power because it wasn't able to stop or prevent people from dying, and the church finally lost power around 1648 CE. 
In, the, in conclusion, the church was very important in the Middle Ages. Citizens would live their whole lives devoted to their religion, from the day of their birth to their very last breath.